Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll organize our main components using sections. Then we'll use instances to build the page layouts of our portfolio website. Let's go. We'll start on the components page. We've been moving our main components to this page throughout the course, but we haven't organized them beyond that. If components are scattered around, we could group them together and use Figma's alignment tools to tidy things up. But we want to take our file organization to the next level by using sections to group similar components together. We learned a little bit about sections from our friends Katie and Lauren. Like frames, sections are a type of container layer that we can use to organize other layers. They are a great way to group related design elements, making it easier for collaborators to find what they need. To create a section, select the section tool from the toolbar or use the keyboard shortcut. Then click and drag your cursor to add a section to the canvas. Sections have a title field that you can use to give the section a label. Double click on the field to rename it. We'll call this first section button. Bet you can guess which element we're gonna add here. Select the button main component and drag it into the section. You can also click and drag to create sections over objects to place them inside. We can also add multiple layers to a section at a time. Our two hero elements, the personal bio and the impactful text block serve a similar purpose. So let's add them to the same section. Select both components, right click, then choose wrap in new section. We'll call this one hero. Placing components in sections also organizes them in the assets tab. Back to the canvas, we'll add additional individual sections for our nav bar, footer, and custom shapes, and a larger section for our remaining components. Feel free to use a different organization structure. Just make sure all of your components are inside a section before moving on. You can also change the background color of a section to improve color contrast and make it easier to scan and find the components you need. When making some of our components, we added a white background for a similar reason, to make them easier to read and see while we built them. Let's remove those white backgrounds from most of the components now and use the section backgrounds instead since we'll add instances of them from the assets panel from now on. This will also make it easier to apply a single background color to our whole design. We'll do this for everything but the navigation component. When we get to prototyping, we'll want our page content to scroll behind the nav bar and keeping the background will prevent the content from showing through. Let's change the fill color to a warm neutral color like this. Now that our main components are organized, we're ready to assemble our portfolio's homepage and case study page designs. We'll do that over on the designs page. The canvas on this page should be completely blank, but it won't be for long. We are planning to create two pages for our portfolio site, and they each have three elements in common, the navigation bar, the skill list, and the footer. Let's drag out instances of each of these components from the assets panel and arrange them like this on the canvas. Then select them and add them to an auto layout frame. Let's give this new frame the same background color as our navigation component. Since our individual components don't have their own fills, this one change affects the entire page, making it easy to change now and update later. Set the width resizing to a fixed width of 1440, 
Make sure the height resizing is set to hug contents so it'll grow when we add in more stuff. Set both gap and padding values to zero. Since our website has two pages, let's duplicate this frame, name one frame home, and the other case study. Don't worry if your components don't stretch the full width of the frame yet, we'll update that later, but feel free to do so now if you remember how. Now comes the fun part, building our page layouts. Starting with the home page, drag an instance of the personal bio main component into the home page frame. Position it between the navigation bar and the skills list and watch as they automatically adjust to accommodate the new content. All of the work we did earlier to create building block elements are making this a seamless drag and drop experience. Imagine how easy this would be if you were collaborating on a team. Since they'd be able to leverage the work that went into these components and move much more quickly when building out their own pages. Let's add the rest of the content to our home page, including a section heading and a few project cards. You can add additional cards either by dragging in new instances from the assets tab or by duplicating an existing instance. No matter the method, the home page frame will grow to accommodate the new content because its height resizing is set to hug contents. You can also reorder elements by clicking and dragging them inside the frame or by selecting an element and using your arrow keys. Our homepage is taking shape, but there's one more step we need to take before moving on. Select the homepage frame and hit the enter key on your keyboard to select all the child layers. Then change the width resizing to fill container. This ensures every element will always span the full width of the parent frame, even on different screen sizes. If you're wondering why we didn't do this in earlier videos, it's because the fill container option is only available when nested inside another frame. Like the name implies, fill container allows the layer's width or height to fill all available space in its parent. Once you're happy with the layout of your homepage, we can move on to the case study page. The process of building out the case study page is very similar to the homepage, but the exact layout you use depends on the story you want to tell. We'll start by adding an instance of the impactful text component to the top of the page below the nav bar, then follow it up with a mix of text blocks section headings, images, and a quote block. Choose the components that work best to showcase your work. If you're not sure what story you'd like to tell, feel free to pause and think about it. You can also check out some case studies published on Figma's blog Shortcut for inspiration. Remember that this layout isn't set in stone and you can easily remove elements or add new ones if needed. Once you're feeling good about how your page is shaping up, select the case study frame, hit enter to select all child layers, and change their width resizing to fill container. Oh wait, it looks like our image block component is still left aligned instead of center. Let's dig into why that is. Let's right click on the instance and select go to main component to take a look we can see that its alignment is set to align top left. Let's update that to align center. As long as the main component is still selected, we can click return to instance to quickly jump back to where we were. Now the image block instances alignment should also set to align center, but if you're not seeing an update, go to the instance menu and choose reset all changes. That looks much better. This workflow is really helpful as you're bound to encounter small tweaks that you wanna make or tiny things that aren't working quite like you expected. No one is perfect on their first try and it's all part of the process. All of our portfolio pieces are in place and our page layouts look great. 
Now we can start replacing the placeholder text and images with our own content. To edit a text string inside an instance, double click on it and start typing. Or hold down the modifier key and click to deep select whatever layer is directly under your cursor. Feel free to make the content as long or as short as you want. Auto layout will take care of the rest. Want to add images? Double click into the image placeholders and replace them with real content. You may also want to make some adjustments here to make your design more readable. If your image is very dark, you could make the text white so it's easier to read. Or if your image is very saturated, you can reduce its opacity from the fill section in the right sidebar to something low like 10%. This lets the background color from the page show through the image so the image becomes more of an accent. Try exploring to see what you like. If you've used Figma Design or any of Figma's other products like Figma Slides or Fig Jam for a project, you can add snapshots of your work by right-clicking, choosing Copy as PNG, and pasting them right here. Remember, a portfolio is never finished. It's a living project that you can revisit whenever inspiration strikes. Keep iterating, updating, and fine tuning because as your portfolio grows, so will your design skills. Great work. We just organized our main components with sections and used instances to build the page layouts for our portfolio website. From there, we customized those instances by swapping out placeholder content for our own. Up next, we'll bring our portfolio to life by adding interactivity with prototyping. See you there.